having as we continue to look at the impact of the coronavirus on businesses. Now, we've spoken to a number of persons from conversations with Arthur Lockjack last week to Deloitte and Touche and even to Ryan Chin, who is a business owner. But now we're switching our focus to the president of the TTMA as well as the CEO of the chamber, Gabriel Farry, who now joins us. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Good evening. Good evening, Hayden. Now, I have to start my conversation. Obviously, we have this breaking news development. Now that this country has recorded its first death, uh, Mr. Farah, maybe I could start with you and then get Ms. Costello to respond. What does this mean for business and business as usual as we know it in a country that is fighting this pandemic? One thing we're not is business as usual. Um, it, it is unfortunate to hear of the death. I, I think I, I was... I understand that he was elderly and had a pre-existing condition. And I think what this highlights is the importance of us taking heed of the Minister of Health's warnings. He has told us to practice social distancing. He's, he's given us all, all the advice. If we don't listen, we run the risk of him escalating the level of control. Right now, they're using suasion. And if we don't listen, I expect we could end up to looking at some sort of um, essential services only, or maybe some sort of further escalation. Um, I think what it tells us is take care of ourselves. Is it going to, and Ms. Farrell, let me ask you this, there's a call by the opposition, and I don't want to bring politics into this, but we are in an election year, and this is somehow turning into a political discussion. Should there now be a shutdown of the entire country for 14 days? Um, unfortunately, I don't think so. I don't think so, Hema. I think what, what, what has happened is we have an elderly person who had a disease and they have died. It's, it's unfortunate. It's sad. And what it says is that we now need to be more vigilant. And if we don't listen and if we don't take heed of the Minister of Health and Minister of National Security's advice, then we'll have to escalate. That's my recommendation. Mr. Costello, let me ask you the same thing. You now sit, and I know this is a breaking news development. We've now recorded our first death. Our business is trying to get accustomed to this fluid, fluid situation. With this, should there, would there now be further shutdowns, or will there be a shutdown from the business sector? Hi, good night, Tima, and good night to the viewers. First of all, please allow me to extend my condolences to the family of the victim of who succumbed to the coronavirus. It is a great sadness that, uh, that the whole canal and Tobago has to mourn that death now. Um, whatever the decision of the Ministry of Health decides to, to bring this virus under the control, the TTME will certainly support. And I just want to congratulate Minister Dial Singh and our health workers for doing a sterling job. It, it is difficult to answer any of these questions with absolute certainty because the situation is so fluid and, and changing very quickly. And the world has never seen a situation like this to know how to react and which reaction is necessary more correct than the next. So the best that we can do is do the next right thing. And we'll have to, we will have to face consequences for any of those decisions that are made. Doing a shutdown of the country certainly will have economic consequences. And, uh, you know, we will have to face those together as a nation, both government, employers, and employees. So. Now, you know, and I, I, I know this is all in the new development and we're looking at exactly how this, this situation is unfolding. But I want to return to the discussions that we also had this week with the stimulus package being announced. And Mr. Farrell, I know when I spoke to you earlier, you asked about tax deferrals. Have you made any headway on this in representation to the government? Um, no, we have not. I, we have had discussions with various ministers and they have identified that based on the the plan they have put forward, they're looking at the uh, tax repayment and they're looking at paying um, outstanding contractors. They are also looking at grants for unemployment. They have said that at this time, they are not able to facilitate a tax deferral and they have identified the fact that based on the reduced energy revenue, the only income they have is coming from um, taxation. I have asked if they can look at just 10%, the bottom 10%, the smallest companies, and defer those. And I'm hoping that they will give some consideration to that request. But I want to ask you, Ms. Costello, I know that VAT and the repayment or refunds of VAT, we spoke about the small and medium enterprises. Uh, you said it's a very small number of businesses under the portfolio of the, the TTME that will benefit from this. 
But let's talk about the fact that people do expect that big businesses would be able to adapt quickly and survive. Are they able to cash in the bonds and use that cash flow to, I guess, re-energize their business processes? Well, when the big businesses get the flat bonds, they would definitely, if they are able to cash it in, it depends on what, what, what the Minister of Finance is going to put out there. We haven't gotten any finality on what the flat bonds are going to look like, what percentage is going to be at, if it's going to allow persons, uh, businesses to trade it in and regain principal on it immediately, or if it's going to require them to hold on to it for five years to regain that principal. So it depends on, on how, when he put it up there. At, at first, we were told, pre-COVID-19, we were told that back bonds are coming at the end of March. Now, um, now now we're getting a cash payment out to companies who have VAT owed at less than 250000 And in the media statement, the written media statement, we were told that VAT bonds will be issued in 30 to 60 days, so that's four weeks from now. Um, so we, and we're not told what percentage the bond is at, so we don't have clarity on what the bonds are going to, to how they're going to help the big businesses as well. But even for, for the small businesses that have owed under 250,000, to, to put it into context, he announced that that's going to stimulate 9,000 businesses, and that is exceptional that it will do that for 9,000 businesses. But in a ratio to understand how many small businesses we have in Trinidad, which are about 85% based on CSO data, um, TTMA has 530 members, and of those, 44 are in a factory composition. 22 of that 44 are uh, below the $250,000 mark, and that equates to $2.6 million in battery funds that, uh, that those 22 companies would get. So, you know, if they get that, it, it is certainly going to help, but uh, the, this trickle effect uh, that, uh, that the government is doing to stimulate the economy is, is not acting nearly as fast enough as the coronavirus is impacting trade. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I fear that uh, when we get to a shutdown state, uh, that what is being put out there is not going to sustain small businesses. These small businesses look like um, our bakery, yeah. our gas stations, our hairdresser, hair salons, our nail technicians, our veterinary clinics. So these, these are all small businesses that we rely so heavily on, and they rely heavily on our trade. So their, their cash flow goes four to six weeks. March has already been protracted by 50%. Tax has come on top of that. Employment salaries are on top of that. Um, and we know that April is going to be, an, again, if it's, it's going to be less than 50% revenue. Where is, where are they going to get the money to pay employees? Employees are going to be let go. That's a, that's a must amount of people that are going to be on the unemployment line. That 400 million unemployment package is not going to sustain the volume of people that are going to be unemployed. Now, I know that's a, a very, um, listening to you, it's a, it's a startling revelation there about your predictions. But, Mr. Farah, I do want to ask you in the couple of minutes that we have, businesses and their ability to survive. It, is, this, is this finally sort of the opportunity or the need for businesses to finally get their act together, to innovate, to create, and to do those things that should have been done, let's say, five years ago? to survive? You know, when a situation like this happens, Emma, we have to understand we're in a new world order. I firmly believe that the future will not be an extrapolation of the past as we know it. We're not talking on about, about improving or what we did previously. We have to constructively disrupt ourselves. The businesses that exist today need to understand the importance of building a sustainable world going forward in the way they operate. They have to understand that they have to leverage new methods of doing things. I am actually optimistic that we will come out of this stronger. Failure is a rite of passage. There are businesses that are going to fail, and it is sad, it is difficult, but we will get better for this. And I am confident that out of this, a new range of businesses will come. You know, I look at outliers, and I mentioned, I think I mentioned to you before, there are outliers in the business community that have just started here, three years old, four years old. Um, and they, they, they started as entrepreneurs 
and they have built businesses based on technology and based on and based on disrupting the norm. Uh, companies like WePay, my term, term finance, that are now in five countries, and we have to we have to understand that we're going to have to change our future, because if we try to mirror the past to grow our economy, we will fail. Now I want to ask, and I want to bring Ms. Costello back because we're against time. Is there a light again at the end of this tunnel? Because I'm asking this in the context of the U.S. president has said that he's hoping that maybe by Easter it will return to a level of normalcy. Are you that optimistic for the Trinidad and Tobago economy? That we will return to a level of normalcy uh, by yes. Easter? Yeah. In April? Yeah. No, I'm sorry. I'm not that optimistic. I, I, I share some of Gabe's optimism in that a lot of companies will adapt and they will find a new way of doing business. And that, of course, will happen. I. I hope that they are given the time to do that and they need some breathing space to be able to do that. Again, taxes being collected in next week just seems quite harsh for these small businesses. And you know, we have, we, we have gone a long time carrying a back refund that has been over to the business community at a substantial amount that the hope is that the government could potentially consider deferring some of these tax collections for one quarter, three months, to give companies the opportunity to adapt and change and put systems in place so that they can survive until East. Well, I do want to thank you both for out of time. And my final question in the last minute, uh, maybe one word. There is a call now for a total shutdown. I know this is how the conversation started in light of us recording the first death. Would the business community look at that option if it is a, a balance between the health and the economic prosperity of the country? Gabriel, you first, and then I can ask Ms. Costello. Um, if it is a balance between the lives of people and economic prosperity, then yes. A shutdown. I don't believe that's what it is. We have 22 um, real cases here. I think we need to do the right thing and do social distancing and listen to the ministry. Ms. Costello, okay. you have 10 seconds. Absolutely. Preservation of life is paramount. And if the, the experts advise us that that is what we need to do, that is what we need to do. And the economy will adapt it as best as possible. And hopefully we will come together as a country to support each other from government all the way through. I want to thank you both for joining us. And this has been the end of our discussion. We've had a number of discussions this evening. I'm Hima Ramki. Soon I'll see you tomorrow morning. Will there be hope at the end of this tunnel? Only time will tell. But this country has recorded its first confirmed death linked to COVID-19.